In Creo Simulate, you can perform a linear buckling analysis because buckling is a potential failure mode for thin sections under compression. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I have my part model. Yes, it is indeed a thin section. Let's go to the Applications menu and then Simulate. This will put me in the Creo Simulate environment. I know that this part already has a material assigned. The next thing that I will jump to is defining my constraints. So let's go to the displacement command. And I'm gonna zoom in on one of these locations down at the bottom where I want to hold it. I'll use the control key to grab all four of the surfaces of that slot. Let's do the same thing over on the other side, holding down control. Oh yeah, I'm also using query select in order to get to some of the hidden surfaces. I've got all eight selected. That's good. It is fixed in translation. Since these are going to be generated with solid elements, I don't have to worry about the rotational degrees of freedom because the solid elements will take care of that. Let's click the OK button. And there I can see the indication in the graphics area that I have my constraints defined. Next up, let's define our loads in the model. Again, it's going to be a thin section under compression. I'll just use the regular force moment load. I'm gonna select some of the mounting holes here up at the top. I'm just using the control key to select those three holes. And then let's do the same over on the other side. Control to grab these three holes. And I like that. I can see from the world coordinate system that the positive y direction is up so i will enter in a negative force in the y direction let me change the units to something that is more intuitive to me let's go to pounds force and i want this to be let's see this is components so i'm going to change this to no let's leave that components let's leave this as negative 25 pounds and I like everything that is in here for the load. Now I will click the OK button. So now that we have our constraints and our loads in the model, let's define our first analysis. Before you can perform a linear buckling analysis, you have to create a static analysis. The way that a linear buckling analysis works is that it calculates an eigenvalue multiplier to the stress stiffness matrix and its eigenvector so that the elastic stiffness and the stress stiffness result in zero. If you don't know or remember eigenvalues and eigenvectors, hey, don't worry about it. But the eigenvalue that is calculated, that is the buckling load factor. That is the multiplier times your static load that would end up resulting in a critical unstable load. Okay, so enough talking, let's see how to do this. Let's go to new static, and I am going to call this my compression static analysis. And oh, let me change to an underscore camera if you can use dashes. All right, so let's see in here, I've got my constraints, I've got my loads here for convergence. Let's go right to multi-pass adaptive. I will change the maximum polynomial order to nine, and I'll leave the convergence criteria the same. Here we have the output tab, everything in here is good. Excluded elements, I'm not going to exclude any elements from in here. Let's click the OK button. And then I am going to check out the run settings for a moment. Just make sure that it's using a good number for the memory allocation. And now to start the analysis, I will hit the green flag. Do I want to run interactive diagnostics? Yes, I do. Let's click the yes button. And now it is running. Let me display the status. Here it is going. And I'll come back in a moment when it is done. Okay, the run has completed. Looks like it took a total of about 100 seconds wall clock time. And if I scroll up in the list, I can see that, let's see in here, it went through six passes going to a maximum edge order of seven. So that is a good indication that we got some convergence in the model. 
Let's click the close button out of here. If I want to take a look at some results very quickly, hey, let's go into the results and we'll take a look at our Von Misi stress. And for the display options, I always like a continuous tone. And then let's click OK and show. And so, yeah, we can see the stress in kilopascals in the model here. So that is our static analysis. Let's return back. And I am not going to save the current results window. Now I'm going to set up my linear buckling analysis. And by the way, I keep on stressing that this is linear buckling. One thing to note is that a linear buckling analysis is not valid for large deflections. If you're going to have a model that is going through big displacements, then a linear buckling would not be appropriate for you. So anyhow, now that we have our static analysis, let's go to the file menu in the analyses and design studies dialog box. Here is the new buckling choice. And I will call this my buckling analysis for lack of creativity. And so we are going to use the static analysis results from a previous design study. Again, it's going to reference a design study because it needs to know the stress stiffness matrix from the loads that are being applied. Here for number of buckling modes, I'm going to leave this as one because typically you just want the first buckling load factor. You can have multiple buckling load factors, but the first positive buckling load factor is what you want to generate. And then we've got a convergence tab. Once again, let me change to multi-pass adaptive and crank up the maximum polynomial order. Here we have our percent convergence. 10% is kind of big, but for the sake of this demonstration, I will leave it there. And here we are converging on that eigenvalue, the buckling load factor. But you can choose to converge on local displacement, local strain energy, and root mean square stress as well. Let's go to the output tab. And here we're calculating the stresses, rotations, and reactions. Here's the option to filter negative buckling load factors. Because this is an eigenvalue problem, you can end up getting negative buckling load factors, but typically you want your first positive buckling load factor. And let's see, plotting grid, yeah, four is okay. Sometimes I'll knock that down in order to get it to generate faster, and I'm not going to exclude any elements in here. Let's click the OK button. And now that the buckling analysis is set up, let's use the green flag in order to run it. Yes, I want interactive diagnostics, and I will monitor the study. And then I'll be back in a moment when this is done. All right, my run is complete. Looks like it took about a minute of wall clock time. Here we see the buckling load factor. It is just over six. And so it tells me that if I took my static load that I applied, that 25 pounds, and multiplied it by this buckling load factor, that is where my part could become unstable and could fail in buckling. All right, let's close out of here. Okay, let's take a look at the results for the buckling analysis. Let's go to our results mode. And here we have for this mode, the buckling load factor. We're going to take a look at the displacement. Then I'll go to display options. Let's change to continuous tone and then deformed and animate. And this will enable me to take a look at the mode shape for this potential buckling. So there you have it. That's how you can perform a linear buckling analysis in Creo Simulate.